The cane is a sign of weakness, but in that deception alone lies its great strength. Use that deception to your advantage. How do I do that? How do I use the deception of the cane? I was walking along the bay and I saw a nesting shorebird. As soon as it saw me, it got off the nest and began to pretend it had a broken wing, luring me away from the nest. In the same way, work the cane. Pretend that you have an infirmity. And when a predator is coming in, you need to strike. We're going to do a relaxation technique to get us out of the, the beta state that hurried rushed state and put us into the alpha, a more relaxed state of consciousness. But what I want to do is I want to close our eyes and I want us to think of the number nine and use your, your mental picture screen and you want to see yourself on top of a staircase on the ninth stair. And you're going to step down from the ninth stair to the eighth stair. And I want you to see yourself stepping down. And as you step down, repeat the word, relax. From the eighth stair, step down to the seventh repeating the word, relax and feel yourself, acknowledge that you're, you are feeling more relaxed. From the seventh step down to the sixth, relax. From the sixth down to the fifth, see yourself stepping down, mentally repeating the word, relax. From the fifth, Step down to the fourth, relax. From the fourth to the third, relax. From the third to the second, relax. From the second to the first, relax. From the first to the floor. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man and woman who is actually in the arena, who spends themselves at a worthy cause, who at best in the end know the triumph of great achievement. And at worst, if they fail, at least they fail daring greatly so that their place will never be with those cold, timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. The cane must become an extension of your mind and body. The mind and body are separate entities, but the mind controls the body. The cane must become an appendage. How do we do that? Well, we have to work both our dominant hand and our non-dominant. 
We have to be calm, ambi, dexterous. And I'm gonna show you a, a great technique that's gonna work both your right and your left hemisphere. One, two, three, four, toss. 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 Working both my dominant and my non-dominant hand. And at first, it's gonna feel awkward, but this is just a great technique to give you some, some really, de some good dexterity, some great coordination, and striking with both hands. Strike, 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 strike. Strike, 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 strike. Just a simple toss. Just a great technique. And then you can, as you get better, speed it up. Those that love money never have money enough. Those that love wealth are never satisfied with their income. A chasing after the wind. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what does it profit the owner except to feast his eyes upon his stuff? The sleep of a laborer is sweet whether he eats a little or a lot. But the abundance of a wealthy man permits him no sleep. This too is a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner, or wealth lost due to some misfortune. So when he has a son, there's nothing left for him. Naked we come from our mother's womb. And as we come, so we depart. We can take nothing from our labor that our hands can carry. We're gonna do a deep breathing technique. And we wanna breathe in through our nose, deep into the abdomen, hold it, and then release it through our nose, repeating the word, relax. Again, breathing in through our nose, deep into the abdomen, holding it, and then releasing it through our nose, repeating the word, relax. You want to do this about 25 times. And while you're doing that, I'm going to play an indigenous drum. So close your eyes. Breathe deep into the abdomen. And then out through your nose, repeating the word, relax. And just listen to the drum resonate.
use your common sense, your sixth sense, your intuition, your instinctive feeling, your gut feeling. A woman was getting on an elevator. The doors opened and there was a guy inside. And immediately, her instinctive feeling said no. Her intuition, her gut feeling, her sixth sense said don't get on that elevator. But what did she do? She didn't listen. And she got on and there were some real dire consequences. Try to develop your intuition, your sixth sense. We all have one. When you're walking around, don't walk around in tunnel vision. Use your peripheral, your splatter vision. Try to be aware of your surrounding. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He anoints my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because his rod and staff comfort me. He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. Goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. We have a 360 degree sphere around us, an invisible sphere, and that is our personal territorial space. Outside of our personal territorial space is the free zone, but you have to be able to read both the free zone and your personal space. When somebody enters your space with ill intent, you need to strike. Time and distance is crucial. If the timing is off, if you're too early or you're too late, if the distance is off, if you're too far away or too close, the technique will be off. How large is my personal territorial space? If you put your hand out with your cane and you move around, this is your personal territorial space. Outside the space, again, is the, that's the free zone. But again, you need to read it. I'm going to show you a technique that'll help develop your space so you can get a feel for it. I want you to move around in a circle. Just striking with the cane. Very simple. Strike, strike. And then just toss it to your other hand and strike. Get a feel for your space. Just moving around in a circle. Outside your space. Inside your space. 
Now you're gonna change directions and move in the opposite direction. Very simple. Again, working both your right and your left hand and moving around with the, with the cane. strike or an upper block just using that two-handed technique it's just a great a great technique for strikes or for blocks I've got Rita with me and she's going to uh, help me do a self-defense technique using the two-handed block are you ready Rita yeah. hands in here yeah. Top, yeah. Then the right hand up there, okay. left hand, left hand, like that. So yep, you got it. Strike. Then, this, um, then you're going to strike and then you're going to thrust. First we're going to chop wood. Yes. Now strike the face. Yes, let me see. Let me see a strike your yeah, face. face. And then step forward and thrust like that. Oh, very good, very good. Here we go. Okay. But even, even, okay. really chop that wood. Here I come, you ready? Block, back, yeah, strike. Or even block, bring it back, and thrust it into my face. Okay, like a double block. 
block, thrust. Right, that's good. Block, and then, yes, okay, good. All right, this is it, ready? Excellent, yeah, okay, that's good.